And here's example two on how to calculate the work done through it uh, by a change of state of a gas when the pressure remains constant, for example, an isobaric process. And again, this will be one of the four types of thermodynamic processes that we're going to deal with. And in our example here, we have this big cylinder with a hot steam at a pressure of 1.2 atmosphere. It feeds the piston, and so that, that steam at that pressure caused the piston to rise uh, 25 centimeters in each stroke. Uh, the piston has a cross-sectional area of 100 square centimeters, and so the question would be how much work is done by one of those strokes of the piston, and if the piston does this 10 times per second, how much power does this piston put out? And that could be like a simplified version of a piston of a steam locomotive, for example. So, how do we figure that out? Well, the two equations you always want to have close at hand is the PV equals NRT equation. And then, of course, the first law of thermodynamics, which is the change in internal energy, is equal to uh, Q minus W, which means the heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas. Now, in this particular case, you probably don't need them, but I would always write them down. Now, there's one more equation. Again, since we're dealing with an isobaric process, that tells us that the work done is always equal to the pressure, since the pressure doesn't change, that's a constant, times the change in the volume. So in this case, it's a fairly straightforward problem. Even though we quite often need these equations to figure out some of the other things, here we're all asking for the work done and the power of this, uh, of this uh, piston. All right. The pressure is, of course, equal to 1.2 atmospheres converted to pascals, which is 101,300 pascals, which is newtons per square meter. And then we multiply that times the volume or I should say the change in the volume. So how much does the volume change when the piston gets pushed up by 25 centimeters when the cross-sectional area is 100 square centimeters? Of course, we have to convert that to square meters. So it would be height times cross-sectional area. So 25 centimeters is 0 0.25 meters and 100 square centimeters converted to square meters. Well, since we go from centimeters to meters, it's 100 centimeters to a meter, or 10,000 square centimeters to one square meter. So this is equal to 0 0.01 meter squared. All right. Now, what also is sometimes very useful to do is put this on a PV diagram. So over here, we have a pressure on the vertical axis, volume on the horizontal axis. So we start from a particular volume here and we change to a final volume there. So this would be volume one. This would be volume two. Over here, this is the pressure, which doesn't change. And we start over here and we end up over there. So here you can see that the volume is increasing because the piston is being pushed up. Volume increases, gas is doing work. And how much work does the gas do? It is the area underneath this PV diagram curve. Now, of course, that would be the pressure, which is this, which is the height of this rectangle, times the change in the volume, which is the width of the rectangle. Let's find out how much that is. 1.2, 1 1.2 1 times 101,300 times 0.25 times 0.01 equals, and that is equal to 303.9 joules. And of course, that's the work done by a single stroke of this piston. Now, if this piston is going up and down 10 times per second, then of course the power, and I'll write power, because I'll write P, you might confuse that with pressure. So power is equal to work divided by time. And of course, we're going to do 10 times this amount of work, 303.9 joules per one second and of course joules per second that is equal to watts so we multiply this times 10 that means this little engine puts out 3039 joules per second or 3039 watts and if you want to convert that to horsepower if you remember the conversion factor horsepower at the top watts at the bottom one horsepower is 746 watts so if we divide that by 746 we can see that that is equal to about 4.07 horsepower. All right, and that is how we use this process, uh, what we call an isobaric process or a constant pressure process to find the work done. It's very straightforward. Pressure times the change in the volume 
gives you the work done by a single stroke of the piston. The power, total work divided by time, 10 times per second, times the amount of energy or amount of work done by each stroke, and we get the horsepower or power of that little piston.